We didn't plan the yolk. It, we, it ended up to look like a yolk. There's a thought process, so you, you don't have to take your hands off the steering. Then that would mean you don't have the handle over hand, so we could reduce the top and bottom. Ishigaki-san, I have spent a lot of time driving your new car, but I drove two different flavors. Mm -hmm. I drove the premium, the basic car, with the 18-inch wheels and the regular traditional steering, and then I drove the luxury that was fitted with a steer-by-wire. Mm -hmm. So what I want to understand is, what was the logic, the germination of how you got to mm -hmm. steer-by-wire in the first place at Lexus? If you think about this VAV vehicle, it has a nice, strong, uh, high-response motor and that will give you instant power at any given moment. Now, when you think about that to a steering wheel, you, as a human, the driver, uh, doing the input, at the same time, there's a mechanical linkage. You have to go through a shaft, you have to go through a gear, there's a, you know, there's a play in the gear in the EPS system. Now, with steer-by-wire system, you can take all those uh, in, you know, in between parts out, you can do it electronically. So it's like, it's so instantaneous. It, matches very well together with the BEV vehicle. The other thing is how you react. If you think about you trying to avoid something or you're trying to move your vehicle a certain amount and you have to move your hand a certain amount, right? Mm -hmm. That's like traveling, it takes time. Mm -hmm. Depending on your speed, it can be quick at the slow speed or it can be you know slow at high speed, but it does react really instantaneously. If it's 150, you don't have to cross your hand. You don't have to take your hands off the wheel. It was the point. The idea is, of course, you don't want to have your driver taking your hands off the wheel. How long has this system been in development? So up until like about like seven years ago plus uh, was into, you know, put into this system as a development, as a from uh, advanced research stage. And it's now about ready to be applied over to the production model. Now, in the advanced research stage, mm -hmm. was that advanced research for just Lexus or Lexus and Toyota? Whenever we're making a new technology, it's not, we're, we don't aim toward just one brand. Mm -hmm. It's just, we just make a new technology. Then, depending on those technology, if it's more applicable over to Toyota or Lexus, or maybe a BEV model, mm -hmm. will depend on the product planning side. We were talking about this system having a fail-safe engineered into it. What is it? What it's composed of is there's ECU that controls uh, the steering side and also ECU uh, station in the EPS side. They can control both sides with just one ECU. They don't need other one to uh, do, the, do the work. Uh, there's a DC-DC system converting to 12-volt system is mm -hmm. one. There's, of course, 12-volt battery that's there. And uh, if those two fails, uh, we do have additional backup battery just for the steer by wire system installed. So you have three layers of power source just for this system. The steering rack itself, is it the same between the two vehicles or is the steering rack completely different? It's pretty much the same. You just don't have the additional mechanical input. And then from a manufacturing point of view, mm -hmm. I've got to believe this is a, complex, and B, expensive mm. to run two of the same cars down the, the, the same manufacturing line mm. with completely different steering systems. What's mm. involved with that? There's you know, mainly two types of costs. Of course, one-time investment, like tooling, what you said. Mm -hmm. And the other one is, of course, like ECU uh, the part itself. And of course, there's going to be part, more parts because you have two ECUs and more, more power source. But, uh, those will be like standard, just one piece at a time. Mm -hmm. But for the tooling, that's one-time investment. It's like super big investment. So we want to reduce as much as possible. Mm -hmm. So uh, we try to make some common portion, component. So let's talk a little bit about packaging because you've got a trick here mm -hmm. where the wheelbase on mm -hmm. this car is the same as the RX, even though it's shorter. Mm -hmm. Was there an opportunity to engineer in a frunk here? Because right now, I open up the hood, mm -hmm. all you see is mm -hmm. the inverter and the electric motor. Mm -hmm. Without all of the steering componentry, could you have like packaged that differently and given us a frunk? Well, I mean, there's always a possibility for doing something. 
but when thinking about packaging and what is important for this vehicle, we thought rather than providing a trunk, we thought we wanted to have a more spacious cabin inside. Mm -hmm. So uh, in the front side, we stack all the inverter and those components up vertically. Mm -hmm. So you have maximum cabin inside. And in the rear, we stack those to maximize the cargo space and loading height is lowered. So it's easy to load in and out. I think of this kind of fancy steering system, why wouldn't you have put a four-wheel steering system as part of this setup? Four-wheel steering, of course, would have more add com more complexity and more components to the rear axle. And of course, you have more additional parts, you have more control, you have, more, you have to have additional ECU, and so on and so on. And when thinking about the price range of this type of vehicle, yeah. I mean, Vehicle like LC is like, you know, high up and, you know, they want, people want those kind of, you know, devices to uh, elevate their driving, you know, experience. But with this vehicle, of course, there are a certain amount, especially uh, considering how tough this market, especially around this SUV, VEV, is very really price conscious. So we wanted to reduce the cost as much as possible. And, and of course, uh, not adding the rear wheel steer will, of course, reduce the weight, minimize the weight. So uh, we wanted to reduce the weight as much as possible to extend the range as much as possible. Okay, now let's get to the elephant in the room, and that literally is what I would call the yoke. Mm -hmm. And so you understand I am a pilot, so mm -hmm. I'm used to a yoke. Okay. But in an environment where there's multiple planes of motion, mm -hmm. this was a different experience mm -hmm. in that trying to drive it it mm -hmm. does take some acclimation, mm -hmm. but once you get acclimated to it, you understand it. Mm -hmm. What was the decision process mm -hmm. in saying we're going to do away with a regular steering wheel with mm -hmm. a rim mm -hmm. and put in this yoke? We didn't plan the yoke. It, we, it ended up to look like a yoke yeah. uh, was the end. So as I was saying before, uh, you only had to turn this wheel 150. The idea was to uh, for a driver not to take their hands off the you know, the steering. So was this a decision led by Sugasan in design? There's a thought process, so you, you don't have to take your hands off the steering, then that would mean you don't have the hand over hand and those, those things. So we could reduce the top and bottom. Uh -huh. And with that, we have a bit more benefit of line of sight to the outside. And also we could position the meter cluster a little bit higher and further. So the eye movement is less. So those are the benefit. And of course, with that, of course, Suga-san and those team, and of course we had Takumi, you know, doing all the really needy, you know, small details on uh, how the section area should be or how it should be shaped. It's not just for the design. It's, you know, it's not just for the, you know, feature. It's, those are some of the thought process that's put behind mm. and that's what you get. It turned out to be similar to you know, flying yoke or, you know, airplane yoke. It is, it definitely is. Like the, the experience, you get into it and you immediately notice mm -hmm. a, a difference inside of this car. Mm -hmm. Like Lexus, let's be very honest, they're, they're, they're beautifully screwed together. I think they're attractive. Mm -hmm. um, some of them are high performance, but no one ever got into a Lexus and said, oh my God, that's a cool looking interior. Mm. This, it is that. It is people opening the door and say, at least the one I drove, because I had the cool like Palomino interior mm -hmm. with the yoke. Mm -hmm. And you're like, wow, that is totally wild because the screen does, it is a little bit higher, mm -hmm. which makes it look almost like the bridge on the Starship Enterprise. Mm -hmm. It's kind of what I got. And you don't notice it until you're actually behind the yoke mm -hmm. and you see like, oh, my, my line of motion, is my, mm -hmm. my, my eyesight is here, mm -hmm. not here like when I'm flying my airplane. Mm -hmm. I, I'm looking like this, because you always want to be looking outside the airplane. Yeah. My concern with that, that wheel was the human psyche. Mm -hmm. I don't care how much you explain that you got to be 10 and two, mm -hmm. someone in a panic situation, they're, they're going to be going like this. Mm -hmm. And my feedback to you guys is think about a system like this mm -hmm. and think about two different options. Mm -hmm. Option number one is how about a regular steering wheel? Mm -hmm. And option number two, obviously, mm -hmm is how about four-wheel steering? Mm. And then while we're at it, let's go through the wish list. MR2, a <laughs> super made by Toyota, <laughs> maybe another LC500 that's gonna be gas, let's keep that engine going, and add all this stuff to it. Mm. But now, I think we need to go to a bit of a different direction. Yeah. Um, okay. 
a little bit about this guy, which you do not know that I learned over dinner last night. You are, you're like a dynasty of engineers with Toyota. Because if you notice, your English is unusually good. Why is your English good? So I, well, thank you. Uh, my father, uh, dynasty was so, so, so. <laughs> Go and tell your father that, yeah. see what he says. <laughs> Hi, Dad. <laughs> so my father, uh, back in 1988, um, had an assignment with Toyota. He was working for Arvin Sango. Uh, it was the first uh, project from T T Kentucky plant in Toyota um, uh, to pump out the first Camry out from that plant. And my father was involved in that project. So I was, you know, with the family, we moved over to, you know, I w moved over to Indiana, but, you know, working on that Toyota project, it's first Toyota out from TMMK was back in 1988. Yeah. And uh, the son, myself, um, had, before this RZ assignment, I did have a chance to do a product uh, planning for Lexus ES and uh, my first initial assignment as a Lexus ES you know, product, product planning was to localize Lexus in TMMK. So what we end up with is my father uh, worked on the first Toyota that's coming out from Kentucky plant. And his son is working on, was involved in doing first Lexus that's coming out from Kentucky plant. So maybe that's where you So you see <laughs> where I come up with Dynasty. We learned this over dinner last night. The other thing we just learned is, mm -hmm. what car do you drive at home? What you call Yaris in U.S., but I drive a Yaris with a stick shift. And this is why he is the assistant chief engineer, soon to be the chief engineer, because his boss got promoted to be the whole boss. So he's like the godfather of Lexus now, isn't he? He is. So Ishigaki-san, you've never been on the show before, so you've never seen how I end these episodes. Mm -hmm. What I'd like to do is turn the episode around to the audience solicit feedback on either the topic we've discussed, which this, I'll admit, is very much in the weeds of engineering, or we could open up to a larger discussion about Lexus. What kind of feedback do you want to see from the audience? So I think with this vehicle, one of the theme was to make sure this vehicle feels natural in every way, like especially by driving. Uh, so I want, especially the audience or any of the member who gets to drive this vehicle, to you know, take not just look at it. Please sit behind the wheel, try it, and hope you understand and you feel that natural feel that we wanted to do okay. in this vehicle. So, for the avoidance of doubt, Ishigaki-san is asking for you guys to experience the system before passing judgment on it. Is that where we're going on this? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So let us know in the comments below or via our social media, Motoman TV on Word, Motoman TV on Word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And with that, if you got value out of this episode, I would greatly appreciate you sharing it with all your friends on your socials. Until I see you in the next episode, bis später. Sir, thank you very much. Arigato. Thank you very much. much.